Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Collection Mania Monday and of course we have the next level of pencils and these are the Soho Urban Artist colored pencils. They're made by um, the same company that makes uh, Create a Color. These were created specifically for the uh, Jerry's Artorama market I do believe. I think that's who they're for. Yeah, Jerry's Artorama. Um, they are a really, really nice pencil. I have not had a chance to use them very much. So we're going to color with them today. They do have a black barrel a tip, a dip tip. They have the barcode, the um, color name, as well as the color number. On this side here, it has the company name and, of course, that they're made in Austria. I have gone through and you know as I as you already know I have reviewed these so I did go through and swatch them and for a 72 set they have a really good selection of colors so we have of course our yellows into our oranges into our reds and then into our pinks and our light purples and some more pinky purples and are really really light purple. The the way that they had these in the tin um, are a little scattered, <laughs> so I will be going through and re-swatching these um, after the video. So and rearranging them. But then we go into our purples and our blues, into our greens. Uh, into our, our light skin tones and light tan browns, into our red browns, and then we have our browns and our warm grays, and then we have our, our grays into our blacks. And it's a really good selection of colors for a 72 set, which is great. Um, you shouldn't need much more than that. But um, just to let you know, I have um, damaged my back, so I will um, possibly cut the video a little shorter than my normal videos, depending upon how much, uh, how uncomfortable I get, because sitting in the chair sometimes can get a little uncomfortable. So I've got them all set up here. We've got our yellows into our oranges and reds into our pinks and light purples and purples into our blues. And there's our blues. It's a good selection of blues. And it has a really nice, uh, there goes my coffee. <laughs> it has a really nice selection of the light blues. Uh, and then into our greens and then into our uh, light skin tones and tan colors, into our red browns and our browns. I, that's not them. <laughs> into our browns and gray browns, and then into our grays and into our blacks. So a really good selection of colors. And we're gonna play with them today. So what we're going to play on, of course, is the swatch sheet that I have created. I will re-swatch these on this sheet, but we're going to color the lower area here. So, so just take a second while I switch you over to the close-up camera. So we're going to color this area here. Um, we'll color as much of it as I can sit through. <laughs> Like I said, I have put a little bit of damage on my back, so unfortunately, sitting for long periods of time is um, not fun for me. <laughs> but we will we will muddle through it, I promise. And so we're going to start with magenta. 
and I'm going to sharpen these. They do have a nice point on them from the factory. Actually, that's not too bad. I'm just going to leave it. They do come with a really good point from the factory. So, uh, like I said, they have the barcode there and the color name as well as the color number. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. I was hoping to go shopping this weekend, but then I, uh, you yeah, know, I was quite upset when I woke up and my back was worse than it was the day before. It was like, no, I want to go shopping. There's a little store that uh, Ashley from Ashley Colors told me about out here in Oregon, and I really wanted to go to it. <laughs> However, another pointer is is that uh, currently our cases down here in Oregon are keep on going up uh, with the COVID variant. So with my immune system being compromised, I have a tendency to shy away from going out. I was hoping that it would finally be, you know, under control, but of course, the variant has to take over and cause us issues. So I'm just going through and I'm just doing all the little shadowy areas. With most pencils, I prefer to do the shadowy areas first and then go over them with the base color and then re-add the shadowy areas if I find that I've lightened it too much. Sometimes uh, doing that just brightens up that dark color just a little bit. And I like that, so. And when I was a kid, you know, I was always taught you put down your dark colors first. Probably why my colorings were always horrible when I was a kid. <laughs> All right. But because I don't... Uh, do a lot of colors on an area. It's not too bad. If I was doing five or six colors on this area, I would start from light and go to dark. These pencils don't seem to need a whole lot of layering. They're quite vibrant on their own. Now, I'm not sure if I'm in your way. <laughs> you probably can't see a thing I'm doing. try to keep my hand out of the way. And I will, after this video, um, redo the swatch on this sheet so that uh, it'll be on my sheet because that's why I created the swatches, right? So that I could swatch things on my own swatch sheet the way I like it. Alright, so I've got the darks down for that flower. And I'm just going in and just doing a couple little areas on this bud. I'm not going to put a lot of really dark on this bud, just down at the base where the shadow of the leaves are. This one here, we've just got to put in our undertones. Now, you got to remember uh, when you're doing a, a flower or a leaf such as this where you're underneath and you have all those other layers on top, you're going to have um, shadow areas from those layers. So usually what I do is I follow that down and I just lightly fill that in with a bit of the dark color and when you go over it with the lighter color it will come up as the shadow. So I'm just going through and I'm following the, the line of the other flower petal. Like inside here is more flower petals that are you know, 
in the it's not quite open so it's got more shadow in it words are hard today <laughs> you know what I mean I hope so I'm just going to darken that up a little bit because when I go over it with the lighter tone the lighter pink it will lighten that up a little bit so I don't want it to be too too light but I also don't want it to be too dark all right, so now we're going to use uh, Rose Door. Dior. Dior. Rose Dior. And we're just going to go right over top of our dark. And I have a tendency on these um, little ones that I put on my swatch sheets to try to try to color out of the norm. This is a tree flower, and usually they're either bright pinks or um, really white pinks. So the, doing them with a darker color here is a little bit different. If I wanted to be really different, I would have colored it in like purples or blues, which I probably will on the uh, lilies. I have a tendency with these types of flowers, I think they're probably apple blossoms, to stick closer to the pinks. Just because... I like pink. <laughs> I like pink, cannot lie. All right, so I'm just going to darken that up again. And get up close and personal there with the stem. Okay. And these are layering really, really nicely. Like I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this pink. and It's quite bright. That's why I chose this pink, because it's a nice bright pink. And you'll see it more in this flower because there's more white space. Okay, now we're just going to go over the dark. And they are a hexagonal um, pencil. They are a little bit chun chunky. They're not really, really huge, but they are a little bit more chunky than, uh, say, a Prismacolor. I think they're even bigger than a Faber. Hold on a sec, let's check. So yeah, they're even bigger than a Faber-Castell. Not by a lot, but just by a little bit. Just by a, the slightest little bit. They're bigger than the Faber-Castell. So. But they feel good in the hand. They're not um, so chunky like the... Uh, create a color megas but they are a little bit thicker than the create a color pastel pencils that I have those are the only two create a colors I really have to compare them to I would assume that they are about the same size as the create a color colored pencils I can't seem to get a hold of those so every time I go to order them they're out of stock So then I blow my pencil budget on something else, and then they come back in stock. <laughs> and that's just the way it goes. I'm just going to put a little bit more of that dark in there. Okay. 
So I hope everybody is looking forward to the month. It is a dive into Dover month. So we will be coloring more of the lighthouse on Wednesday. And hopefully, hopefully, um, my back will smarten up and give me the ability to sit down and color and try to get some of those rocks colored because that has a lot of rocks in it guys. I am leaving a small area of the rocks uncolored so I can show you how I colored them. But it's rocks. <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> and I don't want to bore you all to tears coloring rocks. Although I did watch like three streams coloring rocks the other day. <laughs> That's all I did. Well, I, I watched other people's streams as I sat there and colored rocks. Okay, so there's our pinks. Now we're going to take our white and we're just going to uh, put in a bit of white. into some of those center areas. And this is one of those whites where it's visible but it's not in your face visible. Although on tan paper it does really well. <laughs> Okay, so we've got some white in there, we've got our pinks, so let's put some yellows in for the center. And I'm going to go with, uh, if I can get it out, um, Indian Yellow Light. And then I'm going to go in with some uh, cadmium red light and do the little spotty things in the center. And then we're going to get some green going on here. Let's see, we need some sap green. Oh. And some permanent green medium. I think. No. It's a little too blue at the permanent green medium. Um, there's my sap green. And I think we want this one here. Cadmium green light. Hmm. What's this one? Okay, so we want that one, and then we want cobalt green, which is this one. Okay, so we've got our three greens here. And the darkest one is our sap green, which would be this one here. So we're going to just go in and do the center areas with the sap green. Hopefully you guys can see it. I don't know why this camera hates green. 
and like I said, they are a bit stiffer of a pencil, but they just, the color is very, very vibrant. The pigment just lays down very nicely. And the uh, pencil holds a point really, really well. Okay, now we're going to go with our permanent green light. We're just going to do the edges here. Now these leaves are not that big, so some of them just going to end up doing the whole thing and then we'll go over it with the lighter green. Alright, almost done. And the reason why I put these small um, pictures down on the swatch charts is because I always do some sort of coloring with my pencils when I get them and when I do my swatch. And this gives me a good um, visual idea of how those pencils are going to look on the cardstock I choose to use. Now if you're going to use your um, typical uh, Creta, um, not Creta, uh, um, typical Amazon paper coloring books and color directly in the book, you're going to find that with uh, some pencils you're not going to get a lot of layers on and with other pencils you're going to have a lot of tooth come through. So make sure that you, you do the this book belongs to page. That's your test page to see if the pictures or the pencils that you have chosen to use in that book are going to work well in that book. Of course you know choose a bunch of different types of pencils and find what works best in the book. That's what I use the this belongs to this page this book belongs to pages is to figure out what pencils I'm going to use and what works best for that book. Of course you don't have to do anything I say, but <laughs> that is my suggestion. Otherwise, you know. And do what you want to do. These um, swatch charts and swatch pages are available um, to my membership group. So of course if you decide that you want to become a member just hit that join button down below. There's all sorts of perks that are available for members. Alright so I'm going to use cadmium red. I think, maybe. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to use Carmine Red for the Lady Bird. And like I said, some some pencils just need a lot of layers and everything else. Some can just be manhandled. Now these have enough of a um, softness to them that you can just probably just squish what you want on the page. I have a tendency to layer a little bit most of the time. Sometimes I just want to get color on the page so I will be heavier handed. Um, with these little tiny pictures I have a tendency to do one in layers like I did with that one and then one in just heavy handed get the pic the color on the page and see how much um, the page can take from this pencil. 
and that's pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm just laying it down as thick and heavy as possible to see how much that page is going to take. Now I'm going to go in with cadmium red light and I'm just going to color in those lighter areas right on top of the other red. This is just going to add a little tiny bit of an orange to it giving it the effect of shadows and whatnot. I do apologize. Uh, there are some movements that if I make them my, my body immediately goes <laughs> <laughs> So if I do that, don't worry. It's, it's just I moved the wrong way which I'm trying not to do. I'm actually trying not to move at all. <laughs> it's not working out for me. All right, now we're going to go in with the cadmium yellow on the butterfly. In this one, I'm gonna layer from light to dark. This one here, I layered dark to light. In this one, I'm gonna layer light to dark because I wanna see the effects and the abilities of the pencils either which way. So I'm just putting in the lightest color which is the yellow. And then we're going to put in some vermilion. Actually I don't want vermilion yet. I want permanent orange first I think or let's see. Yeah, permanent orange. And then we want some vermilion. So I'm just going through and I'm just adding a bit of orange to the different areas of this wing make it a type of monarchy type of butterfly. And then we're going to add some cadmium orange or cadmium red to it, which is a really deep reddy orange. Of course, if you find that you haven't added enough yellow or enough of the orange, you can of course go over it. It's not going to hurt it any. Alright, I'm going to take that yellow again and brighten up those yellow areas. Get that all blended to together. And there we have that. Now we're going to take our black and we're going to do the outline of the wings here with the black. Now before I do that I'm going to take the yellow and I'm just going to fill in all these little squares here on the end of the butterfly's wings and then I'll do all the center area and the outlining of it in the black. Just to darken that up a little bit and get the lines to show through. Because there are certain areas on a butterfly that definitely should stay black. Especially with this butterfly because, yep, yeah, well, it's just the way it is. <laughs> it's the way I want it. <laughs> Now 
and I'm just doing the thicker lines in the black, I'm not doing the really thin lines. Just making sure I get all of that. There we have it. Now we're going to take a little bit of brown. Um, I think this one. And this one is burnt sienna. And I'm just going to go through and color his body. have the butterfly. Alright, so this one here is going to be in the purples. So I need a little bit of mauve and a little bit of cobalt violet light and some French violet, I do believe, yes. So this is going to be a purpy, pinky purple combo and again I'm going to start with the lightest color. Oh, and I've already drug, I must have uh, Must have rubbed my hand through something and didn't uh, use my brush to remove it. And instead probably wiped it with my hand, which is possible. I do it every once in a while. I forget to use my brush. There we go. That's better. Alright, so we're going to color the very, very tips. in the lightest pale purple. And I'm just going to drag that down just a little bit so that it's in the center of the, the petal. I won't say in the center of the flower because the center of the flower I want to be darker, but in the center of the petal where that light is going to be hitting. around the edge, yeah. This is a great pencil for doing the shadows in your lighter skin tones as well as uh, in your darker skin tones is you know it's a really good pencil all the way around for skin tones I find anyway you guys can't see it very well but it's there I promise <laughs> now we're gonna go in with the bit of the darker um, cobalt violet light we're just going to go into that edge and we're just going to feather it down into the lighter color there. All right. Such pretty colors. The Soho Urban Artist pencils are available uh, in a limited quantity on Amazon, but they are uh, also available in the full sets on Jerry's Artorama. I do believe. I will have to look and make sure I'm saying it right. I'm pretty sure they were created for Jerry's Artorama. But my brain keeps on going, no. But I'm pretty sure that's what they were created for. But I will take a look before I head out off of the video. So just to make sure because you know how it is. You know how it is when your brain starts making you question 
things that you think you already know. That's what my brain's making me do right now. I think I'm correct, but I'm not positive enough to ha not have my brain making me worry that I'm giving misinformation. <laughs> These are, a, like I said, a really nice, vibrant, light um, touch pencil. They're not extremely squishy, but they're not scratchy and hard either. If that makes sense. I just really like them. put them on my wish list last year and my husband because they were on the lower cost side skipped past them if I put anything really expensive on my list it's usually the first thing he'll buy unless I tell him otherwise Because sometimes I put some really expensive things on my list so I can watch them. See if their price goes down at all. Okay. So there we have one of the purple flowers. I'm just going to take this lighter purple here again, the mauve. And we're just going to blend that in a little bit and get that all straightened out there. And then we're going to take the uh, permanent orange. And we're going to do the pollen doodads. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call them, pollen doodads. And then just a little bit of this deeper orange for some of the darker areas. All right. Okay, so there is our bit of coloring with it. Um, like I said, these are a 72 color pencil set. They are a uh, hexagonal set and they are uh, a really nice colored pencil. Um, I'm just going to take a quick look here and make sure that I'm not giving you misinformation. I do believe it's from Jerry's. Yes, the, the Soho Urban Artists are at Jer uh, Jerry's Artorama. Um, they are an elite brand of colored pencils with less wax and more pigment for a bright finished art. They're available in the 12, 24, 36, and 72 count. Um, you can sharpen it without the lead falling out, so they are um, glued. They're a 3.8 millimeter core. That's pretty good. Uh, -da. Yeah, so. So they're, they're a really, really nice uh, set of colored pencils. Um, of course, they are designed to last. They are produced in conjunction with Creta Color of Austria. Uh, one of the world's oldest, oldest and most respected pencil manufacturers. So, um, each pencil is lacquered seven times. So that's that's why the uh, barrels are are so smooth. There's not a a lot of change or or variation in the coating. So it's because it's lacquered seven times. Interesting. But yeah, they they are a great deal of um, 
pigment. They are a wax based pencil, uh, but more pigment than wax, which is great. And as you can see, they are a wonderful, um, they color wonderfully. They, they put down a really nice amount of color. Um, I'm going to switch you over to the other camera here so you can see a little bit better. Um, just going to do that. There we go. So as you can see, the uh, colors are quite bright. The greens are very, very bright green. Um, not in your face for the rest of bright green, but it definitely gives you the uh, effect of where the light's hitting it. The reds and yellows and pinks and purples are all very, very good. Didn't take me a whole lot of time to get that pigment on the paper and blend it together. I didn't use a blending pencil, but we can definitely do that. So I'm going to switch you back over and I'm going to use the Derwent blending pencil. Let's switch it back over here. And we'll use the, the Derwent blending pencil on this one here. And as you can see, it just smooths it right out, blends all those colors nicely together. You have to be careful sometimes with the Derwent blending pencil when you're going over top of a printer ink. It does have a tendency to say, oh hey, you need to be blended in too. So make sure that your pr printer ink has had time to dry uh, completely. Don't do what I just did and wipe your hand across it. Use your brush. So, uh, zip you in a little bit here. I'm going to give you an up close and personal. <laughs> so, let's move you in. There we go. So, as you can see here, there isn't a lot of color on the page but it's a nice bright color. I could definitely add more to this and not use up the tooth of the paper. Um, they are just so bright that you really don't need to. You know, you can easily just get away with one or two layers and have just as bright as you would if you used 20 or 30. I don't know if it would actually, you know, be able to put down that much, but I have not tested that theory. Um, but so far I've put five layers, six layers on this and it's still taking pigment and I've uh, run it through with the blending pencil as well. So, and like I said, it's still accepting the pigment into the page. So which is pretty good. Now I am using a, I think it's a 110 cardstock because that's what I had at the time when I printed. Don't use your finger, Renee. Brush is right there. But that means moving that way. <laughs> I'm just putting in the darkest areas here and just read you know seeing how many layers I can get on on the page here so far we're up to almost eight and that was eight now let's put down number nine and then number ten will be a white just for good measure. So, you know, so far I've got 10 layers on this page and I could probably get more. I'm 
pressing quite hard with the white and I'm going to end up burnishing the paper but I want some of that white to actually stand out so So yeah, that's, you know, 11 layers and, you know, a really, really heavy-handed white to burnish it. And it's still pretty. <laughs> Alright guys, I hate to cut this short, um, but unfortunately my back has decided that's enough of this. I uh, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Of course, don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Tips and Tricks Tuesday. Uh, if my back is still um, hurting tomorrow, I may also make that a shorter version. But we will see. Um, we'll see how it goes. Of course, we will be working on... Oh, what are we working on now? I will have to take a look and see what we're working on. Oh, we're working on the cat out of Joanna Bashford, uh, World of Wonders. We're going to finish off those flowers and leaves and mushrooms. And uh, then on Work in Progress Wednesday, we'll work on the Wish You Were Here by Teresa Goodridge. And then, of course, Thursday and Friday is when all the fun stuff happens. So I hope you can all join me. I thank you all very much for being uh, subscribers. Uh, of course, hit the like button. Uh, leave me a comment if you enjoyed the video. And, of course, if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Another way that, uh, that those are the absolutely best ways to support the channel. Another way, of course, to support the channel financially if you decide that that is something you would like to do. Um, of course, this is not a mandatory thing. <laughs> you can, of course, hit that join button um, just below the video and that will take you to my memberships and uh, their monthly cost. And, of course, there are perks listed, but there are also extra perks on top of those uh, perks that do go into the members only category one of which is the uh, coloring corners uh, swatch charts here um, what else was I going to tell you oh yes if you want to join me over on Facebook we do have a Facebook group for the channel um, and everybody's welcome to join the only thing that we do ask is that you fill out the application um, so that uh, we can get you in as quickly as possible. We don't accept anybody that doesn't fill out the application uh, due to some unscrupulous individuals on Facebook that join groups and then steal their pictures for sale purposes. So um, in order to avoid that, we just have a few questions that we ask that people sign uh, fill out. Um, because a robot and a scammer won't fill those out. So, not as of yet, anyway. We haven't found any. Um, other than that, always remember to relax, color, and stay safe. Thank you all very much for watching. You have a fantastic day and a wonderful week. Until next time, bye-bye for now.